tired. I thought I'd just have a quick little break and slack off a little bit. But no, we haven't. We've actually come to a mud wallow where we have found a very sad scene over here. As you can see, this is a very young leopard tortoise that was obviously coming down to the steep embankment to come for a drink and lost its footing, its 4 by 4 gauge, didn't engage, and it went tumbling down. And this is, of course, nature. This is what sometimes happens, is that it obviously tipped upside down and then ended up drowning. And you can see where it was actually kicking, and it's very sad, of course. This isn't nice to see, but this is one of those things. You can see where it was kicking, trying to desperately turn itself over. I think this happened today. Oh, it's alive! You're alive! I don't know, can I help it? Yeah, I don't know what to do, I'm going to. I'm turning it over. I'm helping it out, it's a live tortoise. There we go, off you go. Not supposed to do things like that, but I've done it anyway. Reprimand me if you will. I couldn't let that tortoise just sit there, of course. This is a little bit different. We can't help the zebra and things like that. It's almost impossible um, to help something like that. You've got to get vets in. But this big mud wallow is right next to the road, so I thought that we would just give it a little helping hand. Tortoise, it is your lucky day. Now, you can see there's a lot of mud here. Come on, stick your head out for us. Let's get rid of some of it. This is really cool. Uh, it's actually not the first time I've saved a tortoise uh, from a mud wallow before. I have also f saved one, a massive, really, really big leopard tortoise that was stuck in the cracks, uh, in, a, in a rut caused by vehicles driving up and down on the road. I'm so glad. Tortoise, you are very lucky, my friend. Very, 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 very lucky today. And it's obviously frightened to absolute death at the moment because, well, it's had its head and, uh, in the mud. And I think the elephants have also come around here and it splashed around a bit earlier today. I want to just move it a little bit more. Tortoise, I'm now covered in stinky mud, but there we go. And well, there's a happy story for the tortoise. Here we go, everybody. Tortoise Rescue 101, that's how we do it. We actually used to do it a lot when we would burn. Um, okay, well, just get dirty. Don't tell my mom I'm wiping my hands on my pants. She'll have an absolute heart attack if she hears I'm still doing things like that. So when we were burning a lot in the southern sectors, and that's something that you do, they don't really burn too much up here to get rid of the yellow thatching grass and the encroaching species, is uh, we used to have a vehicle dedicated to driving around and rescuing the tortoises. Because obviously when you put a fire through, natural or or man-made, like the ones that we were doing for conservation, you can imagine reptiles do get stuck. And tortoises, very slow moving, not able to always, well, make it out alive. So we would drive around and collect tortoises that were trying to flee the fire, put them in the back of a car and pour water over them to keep them nice and cool. And then once the fire was finished and it was, everything was put out, we would then release them later on that day. So I've done many a tortoise rescue missions, and especially because it's, a, of course, a well, a leopard tortoise, and we don't see, we see them very often, but I love them. I used to have two leopard tortoises, so they have a very special spot in my heart. I can't say no to one of those, but of course you shouldn't really pick up things and, and assist them all the time, but I couldn't help myself over there. I had to, of course, engage in that tortoise. It was struggling, it was still alive, and all it needed was a little turnover, and it would have been able to have climbed out itself too, uh, but I just thought,